Hello everybody and welcome to episode 2 of my beginner's tutorial series for Factorio. This episode's main topic will be electricity generation and the first steps into science. So our other machines are producing happily. We're getting in some iron plate. We will have to refuel our machines every now and then, which is uh, easily doable as you see here. Right now I'm holding down control and the right mouse button to just shift that over the machines and everybody is getting their share control left click to pick up some coal and now we're going to produce some buildings so electricity is being made at steam engines if you check out the tooltip a steam engine consumes steam and generates electricity it generates a certain amount of steam we're going to talk about these things in detail once we get there but the first thing we gotta ask ourselves is, where does the steam come from? So, a boiler produces steam and consumes water to do so, and it consumes burnable fuel. So, burnable fuel, as we know by now, is a variety of items. Burnable fuel, well, I can bring this up just like that. Let me fetch something up. So... Burnable fuel can be wood or coal. We have no chance of producing wood in a manner that we could resupply the boiler steadily with that. Wood can only be hand collected by chopping down trees and therefore that's not an option. But there's still our merry old friend coal. So for now we're going to produce our electricity by generating steam out of coal power. That's our beginning, how we produce our electricity. So right now I'm just hammering away a couple of these stones on top of that coal deposit because they will bother us later down the road. So we're going to produce one of these machines each and get down to the sea and start just working. I think I have enough materials on me to get the ball rolling there. So when we place down these thingies, let's uh, place them into the hot bar as well because we're going to need them sometimes. So let's start out with the steam engine. As you see here, the steam engine, pressing R makes them rotate, has two spots where there's blue arrows on it. That's an input output symbol. That means steam can go in and steam can go out. And also, you see there's this little puffy uh, cloud icon, that's a depiction of the material that goes in, that's steam. Only visible when you press ALT. Without um, the uh, ALT overlay, you won't be seeing that. Now, these things are pretty simply explained. We need to get steam into there. So let's pick up the boiler. And as you see here, the boiler has now a little bit of a different layout. The boiler has, on the back side, Two of these double arrow thingies with a water drop icon. I guess you can already think that this will be water. And another slot that's clearly showing that steam will go this way. So this is a difference between these two-way uh, arrows and the one-way arrows. Clearly being said, if it's a two-way arrow, the material will just flow through it. If it's a one-way arrow, that's where the material will go out. So more easily explained water goes on, uh, goes on in on this side steam goes on out on this side so as we see here it's not working so let's put in some coal first but as we see here now no input fluid so we can hardly just right click the water there's nothing going to happen we need another machine that's the offshore pump the offshore pump will produce water for us. And the nifty thing about that, it doesn't need electricity for that. So we're going to pick up the pump. And as you see here, there's these green grids and they are showing where you can install an offshore pump at. So we're going to drop that down here. And now I'm going to press M. And there's one thing on my mind and that's the vicinity to the coal patch. Our power production should not be too far, too far away from the coal, but 
as you see here there is quite a bridge to uh, quite a gap to uh, close so we're going to need our first item out of a logistics tab and that's pipes so as you can see here we can transform our iron plates into pipes there's regular pipes and there's pipe to ground so for today, we're not going to transport the, the water too far away from our starting place. I'm going to craft myself some pipes. Here's a couple of things about handcrafting. Click left once, you produce one. Right click produces five. Shift left click produces all of the things that you can do, and you can also just left click to, um, uh, to abort that. Shift left click does cancel everything. And shift right click does nothing. And you can also just, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all of the things you can do with that. We're going to stick with these, and we're going to put up the boiler now, let's say, over here. I just want to make sure that we have plenty of room to put other water pumps in without colliding with our other machines. So... There we go. Now, we're going to pick up the pipe. Let's put that here. And let's produce one of these things here as well. So we can put them into the hot bar as well. So I want to show you the difference between the pipe and the pipe to ground. So pipe, you put it onto your cursor. And you just uh, drag and drop it like that. And pipe to ground goes like that. You rotate it. And then you can just... Uh, you see here these yellow, these yellow dotted line? It's showing you how far this connection will reach. Once we go further than that, it'll break, and it's not going to be connected to this uh, thing any longer. So, if we do this like that, if you mouse over it, you see there's water. If you click these, fluid system contains water. Mission accomplished. We got water. So, now we're going to put up that steam engine. Make sure these uh, slots are overlaying to the steam thingy. And now we're just going to put in coal, pick it up, Control left click to put in all the stuff. So, now we need some method of transporting the electricity. That's going to be where our electricity poles will come into play. So, I've just right clicked this twice to produce a couple of these. And here. So, electricity poles. As you see here, there's this uh, field around them. This is the area they will supply with power. So we're going to place down one of these guys, and now you see when you over around there, there's a vicinity where there's a cable. This is the wire reach, as you see here, wire reach 7.5. This is the maximum distance that can be between two posts before the wire is no longer connecting them. So we have now also a area here, the blue shine here shows you, how far our electricity will reach. So, there's two things now. First off, we're producing our metal over here. And beyond that, we want maybe our power also over there. Beyond that, we maybe also want our coal here, and not in a way that we have to carry it manually all the time so what can we do about that it's quite simple we're going to build ourselves a road a road made out of transport belt so before we go there there's uh, another thing that i want to introduce to you guys and that's the electric mining drill since we produce power now we might as well produce some ore without the necessity of burning coal the whole time to mine it out so let's create ourselves another mining drill my goal now is to automate the production of power by bringing in coal automatically down here so what we're going to need for that purpose is lots of transport belts so we're going to right click them until there's no tomorrow or you just shift left click that depending on your choices and now we get that transport belt into our, in, or into our inventory. Another thing we need to do now is we need to transport the power over to the place where we want to mine at. So, I'm picking up the power pole by pressing Q, and now I'm extending it, and now I press left, uh, press left click once, but I hold down the left mouse button, and now I start moving. And while holding down the left mouse button, as you see here, 
the game is automatically placing down these boys for me. This does not work when uh, you're just like, um, like if you're, uh, this only will connect if you press or if you hold down the left mouse button. You can also click here and hold down to re-enable that selection mode, so to say. With this method, we're going to lay over a power connection to the coal field, where we're going to work now with an automated miner. Since I know that 100 transport belts are hardly a sufficient number, we're going to produce more of these guys. So, next up, we're going to, or you know what, we're going to leave these guys there. Next up, we're going to pick up one of our electric mining drills and set them up here. The electric mining drill, as you see here, has below itself also such a field of, uh, of reach, so to say. That's all the fields that the miner will reach. Over there below the mini-map, you see how much expected resource there is and how much mining speed is available. This thing will spit out half a unit of coal per second. That means every se every two seconds this thing will drop a piece of coal on, on the ground if we don't have anything installed to catch that stuff. So we're going to place it down here. And as you see here, the yellow arrow is showing where the material is being spilled out. So, now we pick up our good old friend, the transport belt. So, pressing R to rotate it into the direction where we want it. And now I just hold down the left mouse button, and here we go. So, as you see here, we're just plotting that stuff down. I'm going to follow the road of, um, of power poles, but... I'm going to stop building here because I want to have my transport belt ending definitely here. So let's continue from there. You can also hitch a ride on your transport belt. As you see here, I'm moving without pressing anything. And you also move faster forward while doing so. So of course, as you see here, I did a, did a mistake. The belt is running into the wrong direction. But no problem, we're going to get over here and now press R for a curve, and now I'll just run along and overwrite the wrong direction. That's just that. I'm not placing down any new belt, I'm just giving the, the old belt a new, a new spin. Okay, so now we see that on our belt, pieces of coal are rolling down the road, and that's going to be what we're feeding our good old friend over here. And that's the first moment that we have successfully automa uh, automated something. I'm going to build up another steam engine because if you check out the stats here a boiler produces steam 3 per second off 60 per second. So a boiler has a total capacity of producing 60 units of steam per second. If you check out the steam engine it has a maximum consumption of 30 units of steam per second. It's all visible over here and uh, below the mini-map. So that means one boiler can successfully supply two steam engines. So we're going to plot that down here. Just connect these bad boys together and off the machinery goes. But as you see here, we've run into a problem. The machine is not just getting the coal. And if you would be doing something like that, can also mouse over, press R to bend the piece of belt. As you see here, this doesn't work. So we're going to remove that, press R until it flows correctly again. What we're going to need for that job is an inserter. Inserters come in two flavors so far. There's the burner inserter. That's the one that uses power via burning fossil fuels or the like. And there's the electric inserter. We're going to use the electric inserter because we're already producing electricity. And I'm going to pick up the power pole, make sure that the power grid here is touching this area. And we're going to use the inserter now like that. And here goes another explanation thing. So the inserter has two sides. You see that there's a side with an arrow and a side with a bar. The arrow is always the 
the direction where the inserter wants to put its stuff into, whereas the bar is always the direction where the inserter will pick its stuff up from. So to get something into the boiler, the bar must touch the belt, because that's the place where the inserter should pick up its stuff, and the arrow is supposed to touch the thing where the coal should go. So here we go. And as you see here, there's nothing happening. Did I do something wrong, you might ask yourself? No. I've rotated. As you see here, it even picks up the coal from the boiler and tries to pick it up, uh, to, tries to put it back onto the belt. What's happening here is this thing is already satiated. We're not going to get anything happening until the boiler is empty, but as you see here now, it's all working out fine. These things can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but if you ever struggle with the question, have I put it down the right way or not, there is nothing to worry about. Just try it out. If it doesn't work, press R until you are on the right side again. No biggie. Okay, we have automated power production. If you left-click one of your power poles, you get access to your power grid. The most interesting things to look at right now are the top bar, where you see how much power needs to be supplied and how much power we're actually uh, providing. This number here behind the slash is our maximum amount of power production. And as long as there's more production than there's demand, everything is great. So we don't have any issues so far. We're well able to expand this power plant if we'd want to, which we will in the long run, but for now there's nothing else to worry about. Now, I wanted to talk about research this episode as well, so this is going to be the second part of this episode. So, we have now access to power wherever these blue fields are at. So, let's get ourselves over here, where our uh, furnaces are and we're going to place down the laboratory here. Keep in mind that the way that we're producing uh, coal like that is the fundamental way of producing any ore in this game. We're shortly going to replace the industry that we have running here with the electric miners as well, but one thing at a time. For now, we're going to head over to the research. So we're going to pick up the automation science pack and put it into this slot. As you see here, there are several different colors for, of research, and they are all necessary ingredients for technology. So let's look into technology. You either press T or press the button here. So this is the entirety of technologies available in the game down here, where I have the cam over it. We're going to work with the topmost uh, line, but the, these are all the technologies the game has to offer. The yellow ones, that the one which are quite, which are visible right now, are the ones that you can research, and the red ones are the ones where you need to unlock previous technologies before you are allowed to research them. Below every icon, you see a certain color of vial, and that's the color of science vial that you need to research them. If you look add future technologies the engine technology needs red and green packages and future technologies will need three different colors at once all the way up until you need the entirety of available research packs for now we're going to start out with the technologies that are only featuring a red flask because that's all the technology that we have available right now so Automation is a very, very interesting technology to research first. As you see here, you see here the cost. You need science packs. One red science pack will be analyzed for 10 seconds, and this job has to be done 10 times. So that means we're going to need 10 red research packs, and we're going to need either one laboratory doing the job 10 times for 10 seconds, so this tech will require 100 seconds to be completed by one lab, or 50 seconds by two labs, and so on and so forth. If you check out other technologies, so here, military, here, one 
tech pack needs 15 seconds to be processed. And this number varies wildly between the technologies. Here you need 30 seconds and so on and so forth. This makes it rather hard to say how many laboratories you actually need and how much science packs you need to produce in a rough number, but we're going to approach these questions when it's time for that. For now, we're looking at what does the technology bring to us? This is the cost factor. Here's the effect. So we're in the unlock for an assembling machine and the long-handed inserter. The long-handed inserter basically just has a longer reach than the yellow one and he's a little bit faster. Here you see key technology for automatic mass production. Basically what the assembling machine does is quite simply said, it crafts for you. Everything which you can craft in your inventory can be crafted via the assembling machine as well. So as you see here now our red science pack is being processed and now it's gone. So we'll have to produce a couple of more of these. So four and right click once for, it, uh, for five. So we have a total production of nine. So for now we can't do much. So let's check out our lone copper smelter and uh, harvest the melt the copper plates there. In the very very early game iron is way more important than copper but that changes pretty quickly don't worry for now we're just going to pick up the copper and feed the machines with fresh coal so they can run for us a little bit longer okay so we have produced the science packs and now let's feed them into the lab and now of course it's a good time to just start producing more science packs but before i do so i'm going to produce myself a second laboratory because you know why not and now i just automate no automate sorry now i just produce a nasty large amount of these red science packs because i feel like i want to get a little bit more of these technologies unlocked so here's the lab and let's place that down and as you see let's have the one produced so now they work together and our sci uh, it, it's clearly visible that the research speed has increased by double the amount also every lab needs electricity so we need to amp up our power production in the long run but for now we seem to be just fine so since this is extremely bothersome and boring to produce like that we're going to change things up from now so let's stop working like we did before and with the automation technology finished we have new options so we're going to say yes to logistics that's the next technology which allows to interact with the conveyor belts more creatively so let's do that now we got access to assembly machines assembly machines we just produced them there are going to do a lot of the dirty work for us. So let's produce one. And place one down so I can introduce to you the rough basics there. So when you click them, you can just select what kind of recipe they are supposed to assemble. And you can tell them to produce automation science packs, gear wheels, whatever your brain can muster and this way these machines will do all the lifting for us but for now i want to keep it that vague because i do plan to go into work with the assembly machines on the next episode when we're going to start automating other things and i want to start the next episode up with how we're going to use assemblers to do science a little bit less uh, troublesome and the other half of the next episode will be smelting in a larger scale because what we're doing right now is nice and dandy but it's going to be not enough for the larger jobs that we have ahead of us so next episode usage of assemblers in a larger scale and mining 
So I hope you guys found that quite helpful. I'll leave the episode at this point because I don't want to cram into many topics at once. Drop me your comments down below. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed or if there are any questions, go ask away. I'd be eager to answer. And of course, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's daily fresh content coming up from my side. So have a wonderful day and can't wait to see you when the factor will grow once more. See you there.